Did you know that the second highest scoring player in the entire 1980s in the NHL was not somebody that you would immediately expect? It wasn't Yarmir Yager, it wasn't Mario Lemieux, it wasn't Marc Messier, it wasn't Paul Coffey, it wasn't Yari Curry. The second most productive player in the 80s behind Wayne Gretzky was Peter Stastny. And today in this video, I wanted to talk about his son, Paul, who is involved in a pretty interesting conversation when it comes to his NHL future. Now, I didn't really have any reason to throw in that statistic at the beginning, I just think it's kind of cool, and we don't really talk about Stasny all too much on this channel, so I felt like the one opportunity we actually had to do that, I wanted to throw that stat in about his dad. But today we're talking about Paul Stasny because he actually was a recently signed free agent who was available on the market. Paul Stasny is 36 years old as a 6 feet 194 center, left-handed guy out of Quebec, Canada, and he recently played for the Winnipeg Jets where he was a very good player actually. 45 points in 71 games played, he also had 29 points in 56 games in the shortened NHL season. He had made his way over to Winnipeg in a second stint after being a member of the Vegas Golden Knights for two seasons. Stasny's career has actually been pretty up and down. He went from Colorado over to St. Louis to Winnipeg to Vegas, back to Winnipeg, and he's been a pretty solid two-way capable center with some good playmaking attached to that the entire time. However, his better days were pretty much like a decade ago. He was a near point per game player in 2009-2010 with the Colorado Avalanche, but of course, like 2010 was a long time ago, right? So nowadays, Paul Stasny, as a 36-year-old, is in a much different position than he was when he was getting those points with the Colorado Avalanche, but it does not change the fact that he was a pretty highly touted free agent this season. There was speculation saying, hey, he might want to re-sign in Winnipeg. The Winnipeg Jets fan base loves this guy. They wanted to come back. But when it comes to the fact that he is 36 years old, he's probably on his last legs in the NHL, and he probably wants to go out there and win a Stanley Cup. I mean, the Colorado team that he was a part of for so long just did that recently, without him and without Duchesne and without a lot of guys that had made themselves homes in Colorado in that pre-Nathan McKinnon era. But when it comes to where Stasny ended up going, he did not re-sign with the Jets. The Jets are not really in a position where you could confidently say they are a contender at the moment, and so for Paul Stasny to sign instead with the Carolina Hurricanes on a contract that sees him making $1.5 million a season for one year, it makes a lot of sense that way. Now, the reason we're making this video is not because Paul Stasny signed in Carolina. I think it's pretty cool to see a guy sign with a team like that, but at the end of the day, this is what's actually sparking up this conversation. Twice on the 32 Thoughts podcast recently, on August 25th, Elliot Friedman mentions that he believes Stasny was offered more money to return for a second tour in Vegas, but instead chose Carolina. Now, we know Vegas just recently signed Phil Kessel, so I don't really think they're going out there and crying their eyes out. But I just wanted to go over the idea of another player going out there and saying screw it to Vegas and going over to Carolina instead. Before we go over that, though, I wanted to acknowledge what Paul Stasny did in Vegas when he was there. In 2018-19, he had 42 points in 50 games played. So he was under a point per game. He also was over a point per game when the Knights got eliminated by the Sharks in the first round of that postseason. The next season after that, he had 38 points in 71 games. So a huge drop off in terms of his point per game number. He also was a nine point guy in 18 games as the Golden Knights went to the conference finals. And so it's really not like Paul Stasny was a bad player in Vegas. I could totally understand why Vegas went out there and said, hey, Paul, you're a free agent. You want to come back here? You want to come back, play with the same guys you were here with before? Actually, we'll get to that a little bit later because that's probably not the case. But we gave you a home in Vegas before. You want to come back, want to come and sign with us for cheap. And he said no. They even offered him a little bit more money than what the Carolina Hurricanes went out there and offered him. And he decided to go to Carolina instead. Now, there are two main reasons why I could totally see Paul Stasny wanted to go to Carolina over Vegas. Actually, three if you wanted to get technical here. First is probably the fact that when it comes to being a cup contender, quote-unquote, you could definitely debate that Carolina is in a better position of doing that than Vegas, especially when you consider what happened with Laurent Brassois and Logan Thompson the previous few days. With those two being named as the 1A, 1B in Vegas ever since Robin Lehner was taken out with a hip injury surgery... Things are a lot more questionable and up in the air when it comes to how good Vegas is actually going to be. Secondly, let's talk about Max Pacioretty, because this is a Vegas Golden Knight that was just sent over to the Carolina Hurricanes for free. 
And when Paul Stasny was in the Vegas system a few years ago, he actually did play with Max Pacioretty. And it was good. This was a very good pairing and a very good combination on the Vegas forward core that they had at their disposal. Now, I get it. You could say to Paul, if you're Kelly McCrimmon, yeah, you know, you played here before and you were good. But if you're Paul Stasny, you have the right to go out there and say, yeah, but I played with Max Pacioretty. He's not on your team anymore. He's in Carolina. And as a result, I'm going to go out there to Carolina because I like playing with him. I didn't like playing with Vegas, particularly. If it was Patch already anywhere else, it would have been fine. And that's what we're doing here. I took less money to come to Carolina. And thirdly, probably the biggest conversation point I feel does exist in this type of discussion. Maybe Paul Stasny just saw the way that players are treated in Vegas, how they're acquired and shipped out with no real respect behind it. I mean, Pacioretty was a good player, but you traded him away for free. Marc-Andre Fleury was traded away for a guy that you ended up terminating. He didn't even know about the trade. All the guys coming in before quickly getting shipped out, year in and year out, it's a pretty rinse and repeat process. We have seen with the Vegas Golden Knights, and players are going out there and saying, hey, I see that. Why would I go out there and sign a pretty significant deal with the Vegas Golden Knights if they're just going to end up trading me a few years down the line and I have to find out about it on Twitter? Like, that's not really worth it, fam. And besides, there are other factors that say the Carolina would be a better fit for me because I played really well with the guy that was already sent there. And so, because Friedman mentions it twice on the podcast, I would be a lot more inclined to believe that this is the case than not. And at the end of the day, I could totally understand from Stasny's point of view why things went down the way they did. It's just kind of funny to the point that I wanted to make a video about it here because haha, ha, lol, Vegas. This happens every time, man. There hasn't been a single Vegas video that we've made that's been, like, positive, I feel. I mean, I guess there were a few prospect report videos here and there. Like, I talked about Peyton Krebs a few times and how much I liked him, I guess. But at the end of the day, Vegas has just been going down the drain when it comes to their reputation in terms of fans that are not Vegas fans. I said this in the previous video as well, that a lot of Vegas fans don't like my YouTube channel because they crap on their team all the time. And it's like, I'm not surprised that that is the outcome here. It's just the way I talk about this team is pretty consistent because I feel like the Vegas Golden Knights have been a pretty consistent team with very consistent patterns the past few years as well. And those are not some good patterns to be having. So at the end of the day, talk to the comments your thoughts about Paul Stasny. If you're a Winnipeg Jets fan, what do you think about Stasny and what he was for your team in the two separate stints that he was there for? If you're a Vegas Golden Knights fan, what are your thoughts about Stasny choosing the Carolina Hurricanes at a cheaper price tag than your team was offering him? And what reason do you think that could be? Do you think we've covered it properly already? The fact that Vegas versus Carolina. You could say Carolina's a better cup contender right now. The fact that Pacioretty is in Carolina right now. The fact that all the players that were in in Vegas are shipped out so quickly and it's the way they treat their guys. Also, how well do you think Stasny is going to perform as a member of the Carolina Hurricanes? How well do you think he's going to play alongside of Max Pacioretty and Sebastian Ajo and Toivo Teravainen and Andrei Svechnikov because that team was already pretty gosh darn good. And now you added Burns, Pacioretty, and Stasny? Dude, that's a good team right there. Talk to the comments on your thoughts. I hope you enjoyed this British Rolls 99. And bye.